There are times that I need to remove paint from a panel, but it's really difficult to get it all out with a carbide disc, which is my favorite tool for paint removal. So I figured, I've tried Aircraft Stripper in the past and had some pretty bad results, but I've never tried the Aircraft Stripper Ultra. The first time I attempted to use Aircraft Stripper to remove paint from my bus was on the sliding door panel. I used the original Aircraft Stripper, which I should have known better if I would have read the reviews, and it didn't work out very well at all. It barely worked and I left it for a long time. The main reason paint strippers don't work well anymore is because methylene chloride was banned in 2019 and that was the chemical that actually did something. But recently I found out that there's an aircraft stripper ultra and it's banned in like 10 different states. So that's gotta mean that it's good. Now I'm not sure what is in this recipe. Obviously it's not methylene chloride, but some of the reviews were better than the original, as you can see here. Now, the reason I'm wanting to strip the paint off of these panels is because this black primer that you see on these replacement parts is actually just a transport primer or an electro deposit primer. So we'll call it EDP. EDP is basically just put on the panel in order to ship it to the customer and prevent it from rusting. But you don't want to paint over this primer as it's not a high quality primer. So it all needs to be removed in order for me to weld this cargo floor in. And like I said before, I do love using my carbide disc, but if I were to try to use my carbide disc on this entire floor, it would take forever and I would still be missing spots. Stripper. I'm a stripper. <laughs> Can you hold, hold? Well, now that we've had our chemistry lesson, it was time to finally give this thing a shot. So we took the panels outside because even though it doesn't have that methylene chloride stuff, it still smells like hell and it's probably not best to use it in an enclosed space. Mallory also went ahead and used a respirator and eye protection as if this stuff gets in your eyes, I'm pretty sure you die. So protect yourself if you're going to use it and gloves because she did kind of touch her skin with some of this stuff and it burnt her within like 10 seconds. As you can see, before we were even done applying it to the entire panel, it was already peeling the paint off. So that was a, a very promising sign. You could pretty much see it working before your eyes. So at this point, I was already pretty excited about it, but I couldn't be so certain yet that it was gonna work out because the other recipe did make some of the paint bubble up, yet the paint never completely came off. Now we only let this sit for maybe 10 minutes and on the can it says removes within 30 minutes or something like that. But after those 10 minutes, it seemed like the entire thing had bubbled up. So we got the pressure washer and just decided to try to spray the paint off. And as you can see, it came off quite easily. Uh, a pressure washer isn't necessary for this. You could probably just do this with a regular hose. Now I do recommend spraying it with some kind of water so that you could get all this chemical off before you work on it. Because if there's any residue, it's uh, probably gonna burn you or mess with whatever paint job you end up putting over this. It was definitely satisfying to see this thing look like fresh metal, as in my head, I was thinking I was gonna have to use a carbide disc for this entire panel. But this was gonna save me a lot of time. And even though this stuff is a bit expensive, it didn't take too much of the stuff to get this job done. I'd say with one of those one gallon containers, you could probably do maybe four of these pieces. Now I wanted to make sure that the parts were as dry as possible before I took them into my garage as, you know, rust starts to form pretty quickly when water's present. And here you can see the comparison with the other half of the cargo floor. Now as you can see there are still some splotchy pieces in there but I didn't even prep this thing or try very hard because I didn't think it was going to work. But now it was time for the true test. That EDP primer really isn't hard to remove, but my engine latch is original VW paint. And that stuff is a lot harder to remove. And it's also done over a primer base. Now I want to remove these horseshoes that had been on my bus for the last, uh, I don't know, 20 years. And yes, I'm going to keep them. They are special to me. but. I don't think I'm going to leave them on my restoration. Maybe I'll put it inside as a little, you know, a uh, good luck charm. Don't horseshoes mean good luck or something like that? Anyways, it was time to try it out on an actual piece of VW metal. Same thing, I did not prep it very well at all because I wasn't thinking it was going to work. I think if you scuff the surface before you apply this, it works better. Maybe we'll try that later in this video. But for this piece, I did leave it for 30 minutes. And as you can see, Within the first 10 minutes, it was already working pretty well. Once the 30 minutes were up, it was looking quite promising. And this was without even trying. I just kind of spread it on there and left it because I really didn't think it was going to work on the VW paint. 
Once we got the pressure washer out, almost all the paint came off. But I think that if we tried scuffing the surface and then putting some plastic over it, it would work even better. So maybe we should give that a shot. This here is the hatch off of my bus. Now the paint is a bit oxidized, but this is the original Volkswagen paint. My plan for this one is to scuff it up with some red Scotch-Brite. I'm going to apply the paint stripper generously, and then I'm going to cover it in plastic and leave it to rest for an entire hour. Once that hour is up, we're gonna spray it down and see what we're left with. Now, I am a bit worried about this spot here because for some reason, whenever there was a decal on paint, paint stripper doesn't tend to work well on it. I don't know if that's because of a residue that it leaves behind. And then the windowsill area is rusted. So in a future episode, you're gonna see me repair that. It's gonna be done the same way that I did it on the side window, and you can check that episode out in the link up above. But for now, let's get that paint stripper on there. One hour later. As I removed the first bag, I was already quite disappointed as seemingly leaving it for an hour covered in plastic didn't really help at all. But quickly my frustration turned to confusion as it seemed that under the paint was just a bunch of surface rust. Now I'm not sure if it was rusted and they just sprayed orange over it at some point or if it rusted through the paint. Don't know how this happened, but this is what it looks like. At this point, I was curious what the carbide disc would do, so I got to carbide disking, and as you can see, it does a pretty good job at removing the surface rust. But now, I started thinking of another experiment. I like to use OSFO a lot, so would there be a difference between leaving OSFO on the surface and then using the carbide disc versus just using the carbide disc over the rust? But you'll have to subscribe to find out the answer to that experiment, as we're running out of time in this episode. To conclude, will I be using Aircraft Stripper Ultra in the future? Probably. There's some areas where I think it'd be useful. Areas where it's hard to get the carbide disc in or you don't want to use the carbide disc because you don't want to warp the metal from overheating it. But I probably wouldn't be using it on big areas of the bus just because I'll probably die. As even with the garage doors open, I wouldn't want to be using this stuff inside. Now if you can use it outside and you want to try it out, it seems to work pretty good. It does leave some paint behind, but I reckon if you just go back over those spots with a little bit more of aircraft stripper, it'll come right out. My final review, I give this product a 7 out of 10. As opposed to the original aircraft stripper recipe. Uh, probably a 1 out of 10. That's all the time we've got today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.